Hello and welcome to the Hyperdis training session. Our topic for today is types of social engineering. Today we will be discussing the following topics. So let's begin. Before we begin talking about social engineering, I'd like to show you some alarming figures in financial losses that have been suffered by some well-known brands we are all fond of. FBI reports $12.5 billion in global financial losses due to BEC. Shark Tank star Barbara Corcoran fell prey to a $380,000 phishing scam. Toyota was hit by a $37 million email scam. Cabarrus County in America lost $1.7 million due to social engineering. Ubiquity Networks lost $39.1 million in a BEC scam. 2014 cyber attack costed Sony $35 million. Target lost $162 million in a phishing scam. Now that we've seen the financial impact social engineering can have, let us know more about what social engineering really is. Social engineering is a form of techniques used by cyber criminals in order to manipulate an individual in providing their confidential or personal information that can be used for fraudulent activities. It's also commonly referred to as hacking the human because it involves manipulating human beings into providing sensitive information or sensitive details. Here is a case study of a famous social engineering attack on Target, the famous American retail brand. This took place between November to December 2013. A phishing email embedded with malware was clicked by the employees of Target who thought it was a genuine email, which led to infecting 40 to 60,000 of the POS or point of sale systems of Target, enabling the criminals to obtain credit card details and information of 40 to 70 million customer records. This costed Target over $200 million and brand image. Imagine, a single phishing email had such a large-scale impact on this retail giant. Now that we've mentioned phishing, let's have a better understanding of what phishing is. Ever seen an email like this from your bank stating that your credit card has been blocked? And in order to get it activated again, you need to provide all your credit card details including your CVV? Well, these are the details your bank would never ask. So do you think this was a genuine email? I doubt it. It's likely to be a phishing scam. But what is phishing? Phishing is the first type of social engineering method we will be discussing today. It's a type of fraud or scam where someone pretends to be a legitimate organization in order to get private information such as your username or your password. The most common method of phishing is sending out phishing emails that resemble the emails of a reliable source. But other methods also include phishing websites, which are fake websites that look like genuine ones, or receiving calls or texts from scammers trying to get your sensitive details. Phishing done via the phone is called vishing. Usually the fraud is easy to identify if you pay close attention to detail. There will always be some form of graphical error, font differences or spelling mistakes in the fraudulent email or website when compared to the original site or email. Here is an example of how a phishing scam costed Facebook and Google over $100 million between 2013 and 2015. Lithuanian national named Evaldas Remausauskas, who was later jailed, spent two years posing as a third party who conducted business with the two companies. It was a BEC or a business email compromise where the corporate executives of these two organizations were tricked into issuing payments. Google lost about $23 million in the scam and Facebook lost about $100 million. However, both companies recovered their funds at a later time. The second type of social engineering we will be discussing today is tailgating. Have you ever tagged in and entered a parking lot and seen the person behind you enter the parking lot without tagging in? Well, that's a classic example of tailgating. To define it and explain it further, 
Tailgating is the act of using someone to gain access to an area where you do not have access or authorization to enter. This attack is a physical attack. There are many ways you can tailgate. You can simply follow someone after they have tagged in or pretend to be someone else and enter right after an individual has entered the given premises. The simplest way to protect yourself from tailgating is by verifying an individual's ID prior to them entering a given premises. A classic example of tailgating is an individual dressed up as a delivery driver holding several boxes in his hand, waiting for someone to enter an office building. As soon as an employee tags in and verifies his identity, the attacker asks the employee to simply hold the door and gains access through the authorized individual. Dumpster diving. Ever heard of the phrase, one man's trash is another man's treasure? Well, that's dumpster diving for you. Dumpster diving is the simple act of collecting items from dumpsters that can be used for personal advantage. The individual goes through the dumpster in order to retrieve important documents or important information. Now you may think this is a relatively harmless act, right? But imagine a disgruntled employee who has just been fired knows that after every three months the important documents of the organization are dumped in the dumpster outside the office building. He can do dumpster diving in order to gain some information that might be beneficial for him in harming the organization. Now that's dangerous. The policies for dumpster diving vary from country to country. In USA, the act of dumpster diving is not considered illegal. In 2000, Oracle hired a prominent Washington detective firm to investigate and rummage through the corporate dumpsters of Microsoft in order to obtain documents to gain a competitive edge against Microsoft. Now this was a high-level dumpster diving case. Impersonation Imagine seeing a message from James Charles or your favorite celebrity in your DMs stating that you have won a special gift. Or getting a call or a message from your local telecom provider stating that you have won a huge sum of money. Wouldn't that be a treat? But what are the chances of you winning a lottery or your favorite celebrity texting you? Very low, right? The likely answer to this is that you have fallen victim to an impersonation scam. Impersonation is another method of social engineering where the attacker is pretending to be someone else. The attacker pretends to be someone else by dressing up like them or sounding like them in order to get their work done or gain important information. This type of fraud can be identified if you notice any peculiar behavior or requests from the impersonator. For example, asking for your personal details or information. In 2014, famous online payments company Zoom Corporation fell prey to an impersonation scam, where an individual was impersonating to be the CEO of the company. He emailed an employee from the finance department and managed to transfer over $30 million in corporate cash to an overseas account. Now this was another high-profile social engineering case. Hoax Ever seen your antivirus subscription alerting you that you have several viruses right before your antivirus subscription is ending? Or asking you to upgrade or renew your subscription? Well, that's the most common example of a hoax. A hoax is a fake threat or a threat that doesn't actually exist. It's used to scare or trick someone. Hoaxes work by intimidating or scaring someone in order to gain information or money from them. They waste a lot of your time by diverting your attention, but usually you have nothing to worry about. It's all just a big scam. A famous example of a hoax was a message that went viral on Instagram, stating that Instagram's privacy policy has changed and can restore any picture or message that has been posted or deleted and will enable Instagram to make those posts public. 
It will also give Instagram permission to use those photos and data in court cases in litigation against you. And in order to avoid it, you need to copy paste and forward this message. This was a classic example of a hoax that just wasted people's time. Many famous celebrities such as Julia Roberts and Usher fell for this hoax. Shoulder Surfing This picture is pretty much self-explanatory. However, let's go into the details of what shoulder surfing is. Shoulder surfing is the act or the method of overlooking onto somebody's screen in order to find out what is on their device. But how does shoulder surfing work? The attacker positions himself in such a way in order to see information on an individual screen. If the attacker is far away from the screen, he can use binoculars to do this as well. The most common way to avoid this is by using privacy filters on all your devices. This is a real-life example of a common shoulder surfing act that took place in America. Between 2014 and 2015, Ayana Bastian was caught shoulder surfing at ATMs in Walnut Creek, California for credit card and PIN details. She later conducted theft with all the details she acquired. She was prosecuted for all her crimes at a later time. Lunchtime attack is the last social engineering attack we will be discussing today. Ever seen an employee hovering over your desk laptop after you've returned from your lunch break and found it suspicious? Well, that's a lunchtime attack right there. A lunchtime attack is an attack where the perpetrator gains access to an individual's device when they have left it unlocked and unattended. This is an insider attack or an insider threat. A common technique of a lunchtime attack is when an employee keeps his laptop logged in and has gone for lunch. The perpetrator is aware of this particular employee's lunch timings and gains access to his unlocked device. Hence the term lunchtime attack. It's a relatively simple social engineering attack. You can protect yourself from a lunchtime attack by locking your laptop and devices at all times and using the appropriate privacy and security measures. With this, we conclude our session on types of social engineering. Thank you for watching.